What's up, everybody? Welcome to our virtual show. Good morning. Hey, hey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, guys, uh, the Movement is Medicine podcast. This is our our first edition that we have taken um, virtual into our virtual head to toe podcast room right now. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we leverage Love technology it. to stay connected. Absolutely, we got to in times like this. Community. Yeah. And today on the show, we want to cover a very important topic, which is, uh, are we open or not? So here in Edmonds, uh, the shelter in place, stay at home, stay healthy order has been enacted. And there's a lot of questions around who's open, who's not, what's essential, what's not essential. And a lot of people wondering, should they come into the clinic? Uh, can they come into the clinic? and you know what's the deal what's going on so i thought we should talk about that today and then maybe get into a little bit on what we've done to allow both emergency and non-emergency patients to come in so we've we've done some very innovative things intentional things to be able to see everyone but i want to talk about what that is today so everybody knows so let's start off with the first question are we open yes <laughs> yes hey, we are yeah, I mean, we've all reviewed Inslee's order, and um, you know, we are a medical office. We're doctors here, so we are not um, we are not affected by this uh, order because we are essential services. So, um, the office will remain open, and your visit here is um, considered uh, okay within that within that order. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's one of the biggest things to understand is that we are we are an essential service. So like we are still open, we are still available to help people out. And especially I feel like that's really important in a time like this for people to understand that. Like we're here for them, you know, like as much and that's exactly what we want to be. And there's Ashley. Hey. 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 Ashley, well What's up, team? What's up? What's up? So yeah, we were just talking actually about the fact that we're open. Um, we all feel so passionate about being able to care for people during this time. Um, there is not a lot of medical options for people right now. Um, and we, we've all, we've all talked, we're all so committed to being here. I mean, it, it is part of our, of the oath that we sign when we, when we become doctors is that we are, we're here to serve people. So that's our commitment. Yeah. Because I think one of the questions that, that has come up or that, that I think I, maybe it was Ashley or somebody was bringing up was like, you know, should you guys be open? And it's a similar question that that every medical professional um, has to ask right now, whether that's in here in the Kairos or if you're like in a smaller doctor's office. But to your point, it's one of the reasons why you got into it's like the oath you took. And now is the time when you're stepping up to be able to serve people and help them now more than ever. The services are critical. So yeah. I think it's a pretty uh, incredible and brave thing to be staying open and to be putting in all of the extra work and effort to make sure that you're safe and that patients are safe. Yeah. 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 It's one of those things where, where we had somebody come in even yesterday where they were, they were essentially like just waiting for their pain to go away for the past couple of weeks, especially for the past two since she's also a nurse, she's been, uh, abiding by like the social distancing and whatnot and eventually she just got to the point where she couldn't stay home anymore she wasn't able to pick up her children she wasn't able to bend over and clean around the house and just for that alone i i, I mean we're obviously an essential medical service just because of that yeah i mean yeah. a personal story which is an emotional one for me my um you know my brother's coming in this morning to see dr to dr tim um and, uh, you know, he's been in the ICU with his baby waiting for a transplant, a bone marrow transplant now for um, two months. And he can't even stand. And he has to hold his baby in a room, basically, you know, uh, and he, he he's in so much pain, you know, and he's got to care for this four month old child. And, you know, he's like, I'm desperate. I'm like, come in, you know, I've got someone here for you and we can help him out. I mean. We have nurses coming in. We have first responders coming in. I mean, back pain is is very real. You know, we're not talking about a mild case of uh, knee pain right now. We're talking about people who can't move. So yeah, it's really important. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we're seeing that with a lot of different patients. And I feel like that's the response that we've been getting a lot between all of us is, you know, a lot of people thanking us that we are open um, yeah. after realizing that we are and we're still here to serve people. Because, you know, and we've, you know, probably we'll get into more of this in just a sec, but, you know, we've implemented a lot of things here. I mean, we obviously hold ourselves to a very high cleanliness standard to begin with. Um, and really it's just emphasizing that. And so we're making this a safe place for people to come into. And they're thankful for the fact that they actually can come in here because, yeah, these are very real issues that people deal with. And, you know, like I said before, we're keeping it a safe place. And it's a great time for people to be able to come in and realize that they still can come in. And we're like, that's why we're here. We're happy to help people out. And that's what we want to do. We want to help people out. That's why we got into the profession in the first place. So, yeah. To your point, Boy, that's I mean, we've gotten positive feedback. And I've shared recently that I've also gotten negative feedback about us still being open. Um, and I mean, we're not we're not forcing anybody to be at the office. You know, like you said, we're implementing the correct cleanliness standards. Um, we're being very precautionary. Um, we're treating acute cases, and I mean, pain doesn't stop just because we're dealing with a pandemic. You know, people still have back pain, people still have neck pain. And for a lot of people that are still working from home, that's a very real thing. Um, and I think it's a really good thing that we're still providing services for those folks. Let's talk yeah. a little bit about what we've done from a scheduling standpoint and also even from an intake, but basically we've changed all the protocols around from the moment a person walks in to how we're scheduling to create uh, space so there's not overlap with, with too many patients trying to come in at once. Let's talk about some of these things that we've done so that now we can really expand and, and, and see more people, um, but, but do so in a different manner than we were doing before. Yeah, well, I mean, our hours have essentially remained the same, with the exception of the fact that we're staggering ourselves as doctors, though we have, you know, instead of all four of us being here together, we're, we're staggering our efforts. And then we're also um, really staggering patient cases further apart. Um, we're a big enough clinic that um, abiding by social distancing is actually relatively uh, easy here. We have a lot of space in the rehab floor to separate people. Um, we never have more than two people out here at a time. And when a patient comes in, we room them. You know, we have um, five treatment rooms here. So um, a patient's never um, waiting in the waiting room. Um, we have two chairs out there right now, which are about eight feet apart. Um, in case someone does need to sit down, but you know we're being really careful about that. And uh, but it's mainly the schedule staggering that's really allowing for us not to have that usual hustle and bustle that we have in here. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. In terms of you know, that's that's so good. And then in terms of we still maintaining all the same kind of sanitation and cleanliness protocols that we've implemented now for for weeks. Yeah, I mean, we've been all over this thing from, from the beginning, and we're a very uh, a sanitary clinic, obviously, anyway. I think what I feel is different now is how, you know, we, we completely sterilized um, the room in between every every client. So that includes um, the chair handles, the, the doorknob, things that we would not normally have done. We always have sterilized our equipment and the tables in between every person and our hands, obviously. But now we're uh, including all the touchable surfaces, the counters, um, computers, door handles, I mean, everything in between every person. So it's um, it's extremely thorough, yes. Yeah, and especially even out on the rehab floor too. I mean, no matter what equipment people are using, whether or not it's a lacrosse ball, foam roller, the mat, the table that's out there. I mean, it's really anything and everything that is touched at any point during the day. We're sterilizing multiple times throughout the day after every use between each visit and just being very diligent about that. Um, not only, you know, just our front desk staff, but us as doctors, we're all taking that into consideration. We're all working as a team here to make this a safe place for people. Yeah. And, you know, we have been for a while and we were all, um, you know, now, of course, it is law to shelter in place, but all of us have been uh, sheltering in place so that we are healthy and able to care for not not only care for each other in this clinic, um, limiting exposure, but also care for our patients. So we're being extremely careful that we can come in here and care for our patients. Plus, you know, since the beginning, we've been screening patients, anyone who's traveled, uh, anyone who has any type of, um, you know, cold symptoms. I mean, patients are, everyone is so careful. If they have a slight sniffle and it's allergies, they call and say, hey, I'm not sure. And we say, yeah, don't come in, right? We want this to be such a safe place. 
um, and we're doing everything that we can to ensure that that it stays that way. Yeah, fantastic. Now, if a person's on, so if, like, so that you bring up a good point there, which is like, if you if you're wondering, should I come in? Uh, should I not? Um, rather than just, it's probably Paul, right? I mean, is that what we suggest people to do? Is is just to call in and and we can kind of evaluate that. So, and, and I'm talking about people here who don't have any, they don't have any like cold flu symptoms. They don't have any sniffles or anything, they, but they have their pain, but maybe they're wondering like, should I still come? Um, if you're uncertain call is probably what I would say, because chances are that if you are in significant pain and this is part of something that you're dealing with right now, that it's completely appropriate for you to get treatment for that, for that pain. But if you're uncertain call, yeah, absolutely. I mean, any of us will take a phone call and, and, and have a chat with you if you're uncertain. But, um, you know, we're 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 one of the few offices that are still really seeing patients and open and available. I mean, um, a lot of medical offices are closing and for and so people are, you know, sort of stacking up with their needs. Um, yeah. So it's a funny situation to be in. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And especially too with like people getting out um out and about more. It's interesting. Uh one of um one of my friends' connections or whatever is like a mountain rescue person. And they have had all of these hikers who are have been unprepared and have been doing these hikes and uh like mailbox peak and they've been rescued, they've been like like a huge spike in mountain rescue cases because People are helping them out. They broke their toe. They sprained their ankle. They, they're just not conditioned for it. And then they're out. They're out doing something now outside that they haven't done in a while. And so we're seeing that a lot too with people out running a ton. You know, if you've been inside and you've been going to OTF or some other, you know, down to the, the gym and you've been used to running on a treadmill and now you just take it, and you get it outside it, and you're like, whoa! You've realized really quickly like running on a road and running on a treadmill are very different experiences for the body you know, yeah. your body big time. So, you know, if, if you've been in transition, you're like, you're trying to maintain your fitness and you've transitioned and you've gotten an injury, an unexpected injury. I mean, I was at the, I was at the park before the park ban happened doing pull-ups. Yeah. You know, I like tweaked a muscle in my upper, you know, it's like, you're just doing weird, different stuff. Maybe you're filling up milk jugs with water or lifting a sack of cans over your head. Cause you don't have a workout here. And making it work. In, injuries make still happen. Well, yeah. and people are working from home, right? I mean, we've got people doing heavy duty jobs, you know, everything from hospital administrators to you know, people doing big stuff and they're at home set up in their, you know, back office trying to do a full workload without proper ergonomics. Their, our neck pain cases have skyrocketed. We were talking about that yesterday. Yeah, I'd Long say neck pain and whatever Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, hey team, I've got to check out. I've actually got a patient who needs to come in, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the meeting. I'm not sure I know how, but I'll let you guys continue. <laughs> thanks, Dr. Annie. Oh. Okay, well, yeah, thanks, guys. So I think the message is: listen, if if you are out there and you have pain right now, and you're in a position uh, where you're not having any kind of symptoms of any sickness or anything, then it's totally appropriate. We're open, we're ready. If you're worried or you're wondering, should you come in? Give us a call, and we can talk it through with one of the docs to make sure that it's right for you to come in, but we are open and we are able to continue to see patients. Yeah, 100%, absolutely. Yep. We're here to serve yep. the community and like we always have. Absolutely. And we're, you know, we do feel like it's, you know, that's why we do what we do is to help people out. And we want, and exactly like you said, Barry, we want people to know that we're here for them as they need us, so. Yep. Fantastic, thank you so much for being there. Thanks so much for staying open and uh, we will look forward to getting back together here, maybe even later this week um on a show and i think what we could on our next show we should start talking about some of the things people can do at home for self-care um and maybe we'll get into a couple different uh a couple different things people can do if they are feeling that neck pain or knee pain or whatever and it's not so severe that they need to come in uh but they're wondering what they should be doing uh, maybe we'll start putting out some content on what people can do at home too Perfect. absolutely yeah that sounds great sounds good yeah. awesome guys we'll have a fantastic rest of the day and uh we'll talk again soon Sounds great. See you later, Barry. All right. Bye. Thanks, Barry.